On my release from prison, I decided that I could no longer continue living the life I used to live before. Going back to prison was not an option. Prison was something that I really, really struggled with personally. I couldn't go back. I didn't want to go back. So before I even stepped back into my old neighborhood, I had decided that I was going to change my association and I couldn't allow any of the old things draw me back in. So for example, my car, I knew I had to get rid of it because it was known, it was marked. I realized that I would have to change my lifestyle and I would also have to change my mindset and my association. I had built up a bit of a reputation before going inside. So when people heard that I had been released from prison, I had people bringing me money because it was money, I guess, that was owed to me. And it was tempting for a moment to take the money. But if I knew that I was going to actually really change, I knew that once I touched that money again, I'd be straight back in the game. The prison officer's words kept on ringing in my head. See you back here in six months, mate. I couldn't go back to prison. And also, I could see what it was doing to my family. Of course, you can understand my dad being a barrister was really, really embarrassed. And my mum had suddenly, um, she had high blood pressure. So I could see what I was doing to my family. I was bring it, put, bring, putting them to shame. And I knew that I really had to make the change. So everything and anything that associated me with that world, I gave away. I let the car go. I let the clothes go. Everything. The money, I refused to accept the money back from the people that brought it. And I had to start again with that £131 they gave me. I had to get back on the bus, get back on the tube, get back on the train. I started applying for jobs and quickly realised that I wasn't making much progress because I now had a conviction and a criminal record. If you look on most application forms, as you get near the bottom, you always ask that question as if it's not going to count for anything, whether you have a criminal conviction. And me trying to start afresh was always honest and ticked yes. After six or seven letters saying, it was great seeing you last week. Thank you for a wonderful interview. But unfortunately on this occasion, we're not going to be offering you the vacancy. After a while, I got the message. My past had now come to haunt me and the choices I had made before, I was now paying for them. So what I decided to do was, I decided to go to university and study international business and combined studies. I went to London Metropolitan University. When I came out of university, I decided that I wasn't going to work for anybody. So I started a cleaning company. And initially I didn't have much money, so all I was able to do was to buy the basic window cleaning equipment, and that's how I started the cleaning company. Over a period of time, the cleaning company grew. I've just had this ability to, any job I have done, I have been able to say, well, if I'm able to do it for somebody else, then obviously I can do it for myself. So I had cleaned some windows for somebody else, didn't like how I was being paid and made a decision that I could do it better. Also, while I was at university, I was a bouncer or a door supervisor manning clubs. Once again, I got paid late on a regular basis and decided to form a security company called Vintage Bespoke Security Services. That company is still running today. After a little while, I also formed the third company, which provided bartenders, waiters, and waiters for events and conferences. In 2003, a cousin of mine died. I was asked to be the MC at the funeral. After being the MC at the funeral, people said to me, that's what you're supposed to be doing. I said, what? People said, you're meant to speak. So what I did was I joined an organization called Toastmasters International, and I also trained as a public speaker and communicator. And here we are today. A few years ago, as I continued speaking, somebody said to me that I need to pencil down the things I have been through on paper. So what was just meant to be an essay eventually turned into a book titled Against All Odds. The book Against All Odds was well received. In fact, at the book launch, I had members of government there and I had lots of people from various associations come to support the book. 
schools endorsed it, pupil referral units endorsed it, and we did really well. Now, my life is now really much a combination of speaking, writing, and training. I've also finished writing another book recently called Build Castles, Don't Dig Graves. Build Castles simply looks at you can either view life as being half full or half empty. The issues and battles of life are won or lost in the mind, and how you think determines the outcomes and the results that you will have. I'm halfway through writing a third book at the moment called The Audacity to Win, Obama Steps to the White House. It's what Barack did that you can to win in every area of your life.